Jesus. This is part four of four on mission faithfulness. Yeah, sweet Jesus. Everybody has been so excited, been waiting um, for this last part to be filmed, and I'm just going to jump at it. I wanted to recall your memory um, when we prayed for a man named Daniel in the Beachcomber Hotel in Waikiki, and we had prayed for also his son-in-law. I forgot to mention it was his son-in-law, but Titus brought back to my remembrance. When we prayed for them, we saw that they began to sweat profusely. And they were wiping their head like this and they're like, sorry, I don't know why I'm sweating. Well, we know why they're sweating because we were praying for them and the Holy Spirit was manifesting upon them. Oftentimes when we pray for people, we often see some type of manifestation, whether there's tingling, whether there's heat, maybe they're sweating, maybe they're crying, maybe something is flowing through their body, whether it's Holy Spirit's power or the Holy Spirit is driving things out. So that's what happened with Jose um, and with Daniel when we were in Waikiki. Well, back to when we were in the car and I just got the message back from Daniel saying that he's unable to meet with us. Uh, we all decided to drive on out. So Titus was in the passenger seat with me and behind me was JJ and Elijah. Well, they were out cold sleeping as we drove and made our way to Jamba Juice and to Starbucks. And there we just shared some testimonies and were, was asking Holy Spirit, where should we go next? And we felt a couple of places that we were going to go to, which was Kalihi, which was out in Waianae. We're talking about jumping in the ocean, in the water, and then going house to house. And the next place that we're talking about was the Aloha Stadium. Well, we knew that that day, which was July 14th, it was our last day of mission faithfulness. And so we just jumped back into the car and we made our way out. And as we were driving, we felt, let's just go straight to the Aloha Stadium. And I'm not sure if we're going to go to Waianae. Probably not going to head backwards to Kalihi. Um, but let's just see what happens. So we're making our way to the Aloha Stadium, which is the swap meet, the flea market. And there's a whole lot of vendors there. And we're making our way there. And we missed the exit. And so Elijah's like, man, we're missing the exit. What's going on? And we turn around, go back around, make this huge U-turn, and we make our way, and we finally make it to the swap meet. Well, as we're going into the entrance, we have to pay our way through, and thank you, Jesus, that he had provided for us. And so we made our way through, and as we're looking for parking, uh, we couldn't find any stalls that were open. So we looped around uh, the swap meet looking for where we could park, and we ended up finding this private parking area where I think only security and some vendors could park, but not for the public. Not It was a private area. We ended up driving in there and we looked around and we thought, I don't know if we could be here because I don't want to get in trouble. Let's just drive out. So we drive back out and we're looking for another area to park and we can't find anywhere. So we just said, well, we didn't see anybody around. Let's go back to that place. We ended up parking back in that place. And as we did, um, I looked at Titus and Titus said, I want to go check out some vendors, get some ideas, see what is happening here in this area. And so he went out to go and look at that. JJ said, I got to go use the bathroom. So he went out to go find the bathroom. And Elijah and I were looking at each other and we're like, okay, let's go lay hands on the sick. And at that time, all of us guys already, we were already tired. We felt exhausted. We didn't even, we didn't sleep too well. All the guys didn't have pillows sleeping on the ground, sleeping with our, you know, in the, in the van, all crunched up together um, on the sand, on the benches and being up every 30 minutes. We didn't sleep too well, as you could say. Um, so we're pretty drained. We're pretty tired. And we actually didn't feel like doing anything. We're like, well, let's just eat and let's just call it mission faithfulness and let's just pray it out and thank God. But we ended up at that swap meet. So I looked at Elijah and said, man, let's just do it. Let's just go for it. I'm going to lay hands on the sick. Elijah, what are you going to do? And he's like, I'm going to lay hands on the sick. I said, okay, let's do this. And meanwhile, I'm thinking in my head, dang, why did I just say that? Why are we going to go lay hands on the sick? I'm pretty tired. I don't really want to walk around as much, but okay, let's do it. I get out of the van. Elijah gets out. We open up the trunk. I go ahead. I grab my um, whiteboard. I grab my uh, marker and I start writing free prayer. I start writing um, Jesus loves you. And then we just start walking. And so as Elijah and I are walking, 
right throughout the whole crowd there's all the there's on the side of us there's people selling things on the other side there's people selling things you got coconuts here you got um miscellaneous items bracelets uh all just all just type of goodies that you can find at a flea market um, from clothing to um, things that you can eat to outdoors sports type of stuff athletic things fitness health all this all these things that people are selling out here um, a whole bunch of food and we're holding the sign and it just says free prayer and we're going throughout and Elijah shouting out free prayer. I'm shouting out Jesus loves you. Elijah shouting out God bless you. I'm shouting out hey let's pray right now. And so we're walking our way and we find a lady sitting up against the, one of the tents. And I say to this ma'am, I said hey ma'am. Uh, that's what I called her <laughs> to this woman. I said to the lady, I said hey ma'am, I see that you have a cane. What is going on with your body? And she said well I have arthritis in my knees. And I asked her from 0 to 10, What's your pain like? And she said, it's like an eight right now. I said, if God could heal you right now, would you let him? She said, of course, I love God. I'm a follower of Jesus or I'm a Christian. I said, okay, awesome. And Elijah put, her, put his hands on her knees and we started praying for her. And that pain level went from an eight down to a two to there was no pain. And so we right off the back started rejoicing and thanking God. And we're like, oh man, this is going to be amazing because the first person we get to lay hands on, she gets immediately healed. Well, we prayed for her again, blessed her and walked her way furthermore to be stopped by another guy. And this was a dad of two sons. He said, look, can you guys pray for my sons? I said, we'll love to lay hands on your sons and pray for you. So we all held hands together and we started praying um, for them, prophesying that God would use them to become revivalists, that the word of God would be in their mouth, that they would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And we started just sharing and pouring out um, just prophesying as the utterance of the Holy Spirit came upon us. And we blessed them and then we walked furthermore all the way to the ending where you have to loop back around to the Aloha Stadium. Well, as we were turning back around, we meet a guy that is selling um, some Christian apparel and it's called Sin No More, Sweet Jesus. Uh, before we could reach that tent, he comes up to us saying, hey, wait, 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 can you pray for me? And we said, okay, we'd love to pray for you. And he said, well, I'm gonna go and share the gospel. I'm gonna do some gospel rapping tonight. And you know, I just asking for boldness and, and that the power of God will show up. And so we lay hands on him, we pray for him and just prophesy that the power of God will manifest as he's speaking the utterance of the Lord, as he opens up his mouth, that God would fill it in Jesus' name. And we blessed him, walked furthermore, and we're like, okay, it's our turn to go ahead and to use the bathroom. And so we're making our way to the bathroom and we stand, we're both, Elijah and I are both standing on the tree. Now at this time, we don't know where JJ is and we don't know where Titus is because one went to the bathroom, one went somewhere else. So it's just Elijah and I together. Well, we're standing under this tree right before we approach the bathroom and I overhear a conversation behind me with somebody on the phone. And what I heard was, yeah, she's struggling with depression. So I turned over to Elijah and I said, look, go and pray for this guy and deliver that person, whoever it is that is struggling with depression. Well, as I mentioned that to Elijah, the guy comes up to us and he says, look, I've seen you guys with the free prayer sign. My wife is asking if you guys can pray for her. And I said, this is exactly what we're looking for, the person of peace. We would love to pray for you, for your wife, for your family, whoever it is that is there. So I go ahead to the bathroom and I tell Elijah, go with the guy and go there and lay your hands on them and bring the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. So I come out the bathroom and they're gone and I'm walking around thinking, okay, where did they go now? And I hear my name being called out and it was under the tent, Elijah was there. So I go and meet them and standing there was the husband, um, the wife and the two kids. And they were selling, um, they're one of the vendors at the swap meet. And so I just introduced myself and I wanted to just know what is it that they wanted prayer for. And so they began to explain some things in the natural, um, financial things, um, family situations, um, just other circumstances that are going on. And then I began to ask them, well, how's your relationship with God? 
and they began to explain to me how they were on fire for God a few years ago but certain things came in and distracted them and blinded them from the love of God so they felt that they had faded away and that they, they had so-called backslidden into something else and I was just pouring my heart out saying look this is what a true disciple of Jesus is that he's a follower of Christ he's willing to lay everything down and I begin to share my testimony how I met God how I've been traveling the world and how the, the how Elijah met Jesus and how JJ met Jesus and how Titus been, has been with us preaching and proclaiming the kingdom of God as well living a life by faith and the husband begins to explain to me how he's watching these things on YouTube where people lay hands on the sick maybe they're casting out demons they're prophesying but he's never experienced it for himself and I was talking about, you know, who you are in Christ, that you're a new creation and because God lives in you, that you're born again. And I begin to explain the mind of the flesh and the mind of the spirit and that your heart is pure when God lives on the inside of you and that you don't have to backslide. You don't have to be, be in all these things. Oftentimes, people find themselves entertaining a thought. And whatever they believe, they empower, which becomes a stronghold in their life. And instead of Jesus being glorified, other things become monsters. And that's what they manifest, which is a lie. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And so as we're talking with them, I said, look, let me just, I, I love to train you. Come on, you know, this is amazing. Yeah, I'll teach you, I'll disciple you. This is, this is what we do. And I said, you know what? We can do this right now. And so as I was talking to them, I asked the Holy Spirit, is there any pain in their bodies? And I asked them, okay, this is what I feel like you got and you got. And they said, yes, that's what I have in my body. I have this other pain too. And so come to find out the wife was struggling with some pain in her knees from hiking. And the husband was struggling with pain in his back from an accident um, that he had at work. And that he was in crutches, bound to the chair, couldn't move, was paralyzed. Now he's walking, he's limping, he's getting better, but still in excruciating pain. So I had the husband go and lay hands on the wife. And she gets healed immediately. And then I have the wife lay hands upon the husband. And he gets healed immediately. And then I'm like... Come on, Jesus, this is amazing. And then I had this thought, where is JJ at? And as I look over, JJ comes walking around. And I say it out loud too, I say, hey, where's JJ at? I look to Elijah, hey, where's JJ at? And I turn around and, oh, JJ's right there. And as JJ is walking up, we already have the family with their hands out, asking that, the, that they would, asking God that they might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as we were praying for this family, the two kids, immediately as they said, Holy Spirit, baptize me right now, they began to They began to pray with new tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. I want you guys to come, you lay hands on lay hands on mom. And you lay hands on dad. And you guys just pray. You guys just pray in tongues. You pray in tongues, okay? You pray in tongues. You pray for them in tongues. And as that was happening, I look around and I say out loud again, where is Titus? And as I turn my head, I'm looking through the crowd and there comes Titus walking up with his hat. And I'm like, sweet Jesus, this is like the book of Acts that is happening right now. Titus comes to join us. And as he does, they lay hands. I'm taking the children to lay hands on their own parents. And they're praying in tongues over them. And the power of God manifests. Sweet Jesus. This is what I told the wife. I said, look, if God could heal you right now, would you let him? She said, I have half of faith. I have faith, but I don't have faith. I'm in unbelief and I'm in, I'm in doubt. I said, that's awesome. I'm going to show you it's not about what you think, what you feel, if you have faith or if you doubt. God is faithful to his word. It is written, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It is not written that because of your emotions, feelings, thoughts, that God cannot heal. That's a lie. And that's what we just saw happen, that God came in and broke through the lies that people believe to heal. When this woman got healed, she was in shock and in awe. I'm going to put the video up and you're going to watch the video right now. Look, your pain level is a what? A five. Okay, so if I told you that we're gonna pray right now, God's gonna take all this pain away, what would you think? I'm in the middle. I 
I believe. But, but you I just have to be completely me. honest. Yeah, yeah. Like if something happens, something happens. If nothing happens, nothing happens. That's, that's all I ask, okay? Yeah? yeah? That makes sense? All right. So you ever pray for somebody right. to be healed and seen them healed? Uh, I never prayed for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. And you seen them healed? Yeah. Healed from not, what? Not like, not like physically, but like my, my son, like sick. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Oh, yeah. It's a man of God right there. Okay, check this out. Check this out, bro. Put your hand right on the knee. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to believe. You don't have to have faith. It doesn't matter. Right? All right, bro. So you just go like this. Say this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to this pain. I speak to this pain. And right now. And right now. Get out. Get out. All pain. All pain. Leave. Leave. Now. No. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just leave your hand there, bro. Are you feeling any sensation, tingling, anything on your leg? Yeah, I am. You are? Okay, lift your hand, bro. Okay, move it. Just complete honesty. It was like a five. Move it around. What's it at now? It's good. It's good. What is good? It doesn't soar. Does it soar? Go walk. Go walk. Just walk. Just walk around. Just walk around. You ever seen something like that, bro? Yeah, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> this is live, bro. This is live. That's right. So like there's, there's a difference between believers who, who hope and believers who expect. We're on a whole nother level, bro. We're expecting things Straight right on. now. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. So what's happening? I don't feel nothing. You don't feel nothing. So what do you think about that? It's like sore all morning. Can, can I tell you something? You told me that you're in between because you have to have faith. That was a lie because God just healed you whether you had faith or you didn't. That's to show you it's not about you. God is faithful to his word. JJ, come here. This is JJ, guys. Check this out. This right here is Matthew 10, 8. Can you read it? Go heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay, there's nowhere in there that says you have to believe for us to heal you. See? Isn't that crazy? Right? Isn't that crazy? So, bro, what's the pain level like on your back? Eight. An eight right now? Okay. Three days ago, he couldn't walk. He was on crutches. Okay, so you're a miracle right now. He's always saying, like, Dad, I'm, I'm trying to believe. Uh, I always tell him that it doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more. There's more to it. Don't worry about it, bro. Put your hand on, your back, on, on his back. You don't have to do anything, bro. You just receive, okay? You just relax. Now, I want you to pray this with me, okay? You say this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to this back. I speak to this back. The disc. The disc. And all pain. And all pain. Realign. Realign. And come out. And come out. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Back. Back. Be healed. Be healed. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just leave your hand there. So, you just relax, bro. So, the type of prayers is commanding prayers. It's simple. It's easy. Right? You, we don't even have to pray like that. All you have to say, you don't have to do nothing. You just lay your hands. Jesus said lay your hands, right? And so, the reason why I just tell you lay your hands, don't do anything, don't move. Romans 8, 7 says the mind of the flesh is at war against God. In other words, you might be thinking this is not going to happen. It's not going to work. It's not your thoughts. It's a lie, right? Um, and then this is to show you just let God move, right? You lay hands, you be obedient and let God move. Whether there's a healing that manifests right now or later, it was never on you, just being obedient, right? And we just lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So bro, is your hand, is there any type of sensation that you're feeling? I feel something. You feel something? All right, remove your hand. Okay, bro, touch your toes, move. Just be completely honest. Ooh. Any difference, any change? Is there any yeah, pain? Sorry. Don't worry, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> For real, bro. Like, oh. oh. <laughs> so this guy said on YouTube, he's watching this. For real, bro. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening, man? 
Bro, like two days ago, I couldn't even get up out of the bed. Yeah. <laughs> every time I bend, every time I bend. I, I, I think about that, bro. Is it crazy? <laughs> yeah. Sweet Jesus. So that is what had happened right there. You can see that they prayed for each other. They got healed. God was faithful. They've never seen a healing like this happen before. The husband said, I prayed for my kids when they were sick. And that's, you know, the type of healing that I saw. But nothing like this. When they got healed, they were both in shock and awe, tearing, crying, even cussing. Like, I don't believe what is going on. Just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Well, right after that, you're gonna see this next video where we lay hands on the husband as Elijah puts his hands on the husband and the kids come to put their hands on their father. The power of God manifests and the lie, whatever it is that he was believing, God set him free immediately as he hit the ground and those things begin to come out of him. People started coming up from behind saying, what's going on? What's going on? Is everything okay? And I said to Elijah, go and explain to these guys that we're praying for people. And so he would tell them, we're praying for people. Do you want prayer? And they said, if that's what prayer is, we don't want it. And Titus began to share, this is what we see in the book of Acts. And when Jesus prayed for people, that unclean spirits came out with loud shouts and shrieks. Guys, this is what a mission looks like when you are faithful to God. Can I just tell you something? None of this would have happened if me and Elijah and all the guys just sat back in the van wanting to sleep and do nothing because in our flesh, we were tired. But Jesus said, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is always willing. You're going to see that video of when the husband gets delivered right now. Right now, we command it to go. Last thing, go. Right now, all pain, we command it to go. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. All the way out. Let it out. Up and out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything. Up and out. Open out his body right now. Spirit of right now. Wickedness. Python spirit. Out. Unbind you now. Out you come. Everything. Bind you all the way out. Tail all the way up. All the way out. Everything. Go right now in Jesus' name. You're doing awesome, bro. Keep going. Keep going, bro. All the way out. It's just the power of our God to save. Your life is mocked today. Change. Never to be the same. All of it, bro. Yep. Freedom, don't hold nothing back. Freedom, freedom. Oh, yeah. it's coming out. <laughs> Everything that was from the womb, that was from a child, let him go. And from that old life, right now, go right now. We break the chains of sin in Jesus' name. Greater for her, a greater purpose for her children. Father, I thank you. You pray for your dad. You just go put your hand on his head and you just speak freedom right now. In Jesus' name, you are free, brother. You speak freedom over him right now. Freedom. 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 Never the same again. Never the same again. Just tell him what right. Just tell him what right. Freedom from every evil influence. Anything that you thought was your thoughts, it wasn't you. That's not who you are. God made you in His Freedom image. Right now. He has Freedom called right now. you a son so it's happening of integrity, We're praying. God is a son of free. morality. Jesus said, "Cast out not demons." Not these other right? things. Those are not from have. Him. So we're getting that out right now, brother, so that you may walk in Once freedom, it comes out, it's never in newness back. of life. Once you Brand cast out new. a devil from someone, it never comes back. And you are free in God's Jesus' name. Fills them. Let's help get him up, guys. Here we go, brother. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. You know all of that stuff was... Woo! Fire. That's a... Man of God. Come on, man. Come on. Only freedom. Delivered. Come on. Fire. Sweet Jesus. Come on. Isn't that fire? So check this out, guys. Right after all of this had happened, um, 
we stayed in touch with them, connecting with them. We're still in touch with them today. We're connecting with them today. Can I share this with you? We're just not, we're not just a people that are about numbers. We're not a people that are about statistics or stats. We are people who are intentional. We are disciples who are intentional about making disciples. Yes, we're looking for the person of peace who we can follow up with and disciple. It's not about people as projects or objects. People are valuable and they're precious in the kingdom of God. When they step into the kingdom of God, we as teachers, we as disciples, we as revivalists, as evangelists must be able to hold fast to these people and to train them because they are the precious seed. Oftentimes people fall from God and people um, shun them or cast them away because those that have brought them into the kingdom of God have left them aside and have not gone through the place of where they mature them in the things of the Spirit. Can I tell you, it takes time, dedication, effort, and devotion in order to train and make disciples. It'll take you everything that you have, but it is worth it. Sweet Jesus. Um, so bless you guys. I know that you're going to be watching this video. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. You guys are precious. And thank you, Jesus. I got that message back from the husband saying, look, I was addicted to some things, but God delivered me and set me free. I said no to it and I'm walking after Christ. Yeah, I'm going through some struggles. Yeah, I'm going through some, ba through some battles, but I'm walking through it with God. And I'm here to tell you, bro, you're not alone. There's a body of Christ that is behind you. We are here with you to stay connected, sweet Jesus. Right after we had prayed for this amazing family, we decided let's go and walk back, make our way to the van. And as we were walking through the crowd, Elijah stops to pray for two women. And as he's praying for these two women, um, he gets a word of knowledge for them, prays for healing for them, and they bless him with some provision. So thank you, Jesus. Well, we're making our way back and Titus says, oh, come, let's stop at this shop. And there's this shop and they're selling Pani Popo. It's this awesome bread that we love to eat, but it was drenched in peanut butter. And so we go there, we go and buy something from them. And as we're walking back to the car, this guy comes running up to us saying, look, I need prayer. I need prayer. My back is in pain. I'm in excruciating pain. And so right there, immediately, Elijah and Titus, they engage with this guy. They lay hands on him, pray for healing. And he's like, oh, my back is feeling better. My back is feeling better. And while that's happening, me and JJ, we're just eating our, our bread and we're just enjoying what's happening. Just like thanking God that this is the kingdom of God, that this is the lifestyle and this is the life that we live. I'm gonna put that video right here. Legs tingles or uh, Yeah, no. no. Yeah, 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 no. That's all the thing that's clogged. Anything clogged up in his body, be healed right now in Jesus' name. I speak to the spine to be healed, to be loose right now. To be healed over his body, down to the feet right now. There's no arthritis, there's no pain in you. There's no chronic pain from right now. There's no chronic pain from anything right now. In Jesus' name, they're all pain. Command that pain to get out. Check him out. You say it was a 10 now? I want you to check it out. What is it now? Try, try to bend down. Try to bend down. Would this be something interesting? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it was a 10 day. Where is that now? Thank you. I appreciate your time, guys. Thank you. We've got a little more time. Tell us. Probably like a, probably like a three right now. Honestly. Oh, yeah? Honestly, I, I can still feel it. I can still feel it. One more time. One more time. One more time. I want it to be gone. I want it to be gone. I can't leave you like that. God, I speak to you. Look at that. We can have honey purple and cutest shit. There ain't no regulations, there ain't no rules. What do they know about this stuff, man? They don't know nothing, bro. All they know is they, they gotta close their eyes when they pray and do nothing else but that. This guy is healing the sick right now while me and JJ eat Pani Popo. Peanut butter OG cinnamon. Fire, boys. Sweet Jesus. So what you're going to see, um, I don't know if you could see it in there, but what ended up happening was Titus, right after prayed for that guy, went to pray for another woman that was in crutches. Now, me and Elijah... And the other guy said, we have, they have seen that woman with the crutches try to pray for her, um, but couldn't really engage with her or talk with her. Well, after we prayed for her husband, she was open for us to pray for her. And so Titus got to pray for her. 
Well, we gathered back into the car and we set back out. We're making our way, just rejoicing, just in the place of awe and wonder. And as we're making our way um, to finish and complete mission faithfulness, I start sharing my heart with the guys. I said, guys, look, this is why I believe it's called mission faithfulness, because we have to be faithful to walk out the very words of God. Oftentimes, we find ourselves being moved by self-centeredness, how we feel and what we think, whether you feel the presence of God or you feel the anointing of God. But what if I told you that it's not about how you feel or what you think or if anything is happening or nothing is happening. If you will walk out faithfulness to God's word beyond the tangible feeling or thoughts or what you're experiencing, you're going to see that it was never about you. God desires to heal, save, deliver. That's who God is. He's good and He's faithful to His Word. It will never fail, but it will always endure forever. That's what we found out. And we were all talking about it. Man, we wouldn't see any of this if we were led by our tiredness, feeling exhausted, thirsty, hungry, um, sleepless, restless but rather going beyond that and saying, yeah, there's more, there's more. If we just c continue living out, walking after, word of, after the word of God, we're gonna see God do what he said he's gonna do because God is faithful. Sweet Jesus. Well, we wrapped up Mission Faithfulness, eating all you can eat at Jen's barbecue, and we were just rejoicing, thanking God, feasting. Um, we broke bread. And we thank God for his body and we thank God for his blood. And we just thank God that the devourer has to pass us by in every way, shape and form. Guys, I want to encourage you with something. Um, if you would with me, just first John, just go to first John chapter two, verses three to six. And it goes like this. Read this with me. Now, by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him sweet Jesus do you know him do you keep his commandments verse 5 but whoever keeps his word truly the love of God is perfected in him by this we know that we are in him do you keep his word those who keep God's word are in him have a relationship with God verse 6 he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Friends, as a disciple, obedience is not optional. As a disciple, when you keep God's word, his command, that brings you into a relationship with him. This life is not burdensome. It is not irksome. This is not a yoke of oppression. This is easy. This is light. This is compelling. This should compel you. He who is wise wins souls. Every day, people's houses are on fire. But God can use you to snatch them out of the fire if you would, use, would live this life for the kingdom of God. This is a lifestyle. I want to encourage you. How about you go out? Read Luke chapter 10. Go out 24 hours, go out one day in faith and put your trust that God will provide for you as you follow and live your life after Jesus. Look, can you do this for me this week that you would go into the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and that you would be so caught up in the lifestyle of Jesus and that you would hunger and thirst for those very same things. Can I tell you, what if this was your lifestyle? What if you could live a life of faith? What if I told you that if you could understand what it means, the distinction between being saved and living in a life of obedience? What if I told you that you could know what that even means? Is there more to being saved? Do I have to be obedient? Is it necessary for me? Is it just the destination? Is that my end goal being saved? Or is there more? What if I told you that you could know what it means 
when Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Friends, you can find that out on the upcoming teachings that I'm about to release on what an imitator of Christ is. I love you guys. God bless you. I pray that you would hunger and thirst for the things of God and the Spirit of God would fill you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you. I love you. God bless you.